for today's pointers for our session. We are taking Dante's Divina Commedia, the trilogy that describes a spiritual journey as our inspiration, as our takeoff point. This is not an interpretation of Dante as such, but you could call it a Zen eye on Dante. We are looking at Dante and seeing some elements that somehow can reinforce or enhance or shed new light on our own Zen practice and our own Zen path. So in that regard, we had noted in the previous talk yesterday that Dante began his Divina Commedia at a time when he was in a crisis. Crisis is a Greek orient, a Greek originated word that comes from the meaning of a crossroad. You either go this way or that way. So where shall I go? And the very beginning of Dante's Inferno, which begins the spiritual journey, describes Dante as saying, midway through the journey of our life, I found myself within a dark wood, for the straight way had now been lost. So at this point, Dante is reflecting the actual background in which he had been inspired to write the Divine Comedy, namely his own exile, his own situation whereby after being engaged in politics in his native Florence and uh, in his uh, local region, there were rivals who felt that he was a threat. And so they got the authorities to confiscate his property and to ban him from staying in his own native place. And so then he was in a situation of not knowing where the next stage was going. And so there he found himself in a dark wood. Where am I going in my life now? And that is what I would like to take as the first point, which I already mentioned yesterday. Many of us may have come to practice after some years of going on with the life, taking it for granted with our um, uh, ordinary path of going to uh, finish, our uh, finish our studies, taking on a job, taking on a family, and then uh, all of a sudden at some point, Big questions hit us. What am I doing with my life? Where am I going? What is the point of all this? That may be precipitated by an external factor like the loss of a friend through death or being uh, told that we are ill and we may be in danger of death or it could be some accident, some kind of interrupt that takes us off from our ordinary beaten path. As in Dante, the straight path was now no more. I could no longer continue to take for granted the normal things that I had been assuming in my day-to-day -day life. And now I'm at a loss. What is this all about? Where am I going? How may I spend the rest of my life in a way that my heart can find peace and joy and contentment? So these are the kinds of things that precipitate our launching into a spiritual practice. So if I ask each of you, I'm sure that I will hear very fascinating stories of your own way of entering into the spiritual path. So with that then, how are we guided in the Zen path? Well, again, as I said, taking inspiration from Dante, he, was, he found himself in a dark wood and so, he found a guide to get, guide him through that dark wood, namely the poet Virgil. And that is something that uh, has its own significance in the context of Dante. 
but we will not be looking into those details. But now we are in a dark wood and we need a guide. And it is the community, the Sangha, that can help us as people who have also been through that path and can show us the way that waits for us in entering into that dark path. So in Dante's case, in the way he describes the spiritual path, he needed to go into the depths of that dark wood first. So that was before him, the dark wood. So rather than trying to skirt it or to avoid it, he needed, he needed to plunge himself right into the middle of it to see what was there. And that was the inferno. Again, we won't go into the details of the inferno, but in the beginning, as he is about to enter, he is blocked by three animals, it is said in the story. Three animals which um, represented three vices, pride, lust, and avarice. And then as he went through the different circles to the depths of hell, there were also other vices that were described as the cause for the person's being in that circle of hell, like anger and greed and gluttony and so on. So uh, it is a fascinating story of how humans destroy their own lives in pursuing something that really makes them less free in allowing something that drives them off their path of peace and their path of, norm, uh, of um, just finding the light into something that drives them into an extreme. And so these ways that drive us into these different kinds of directions have their own consequences in our life. So looking at those three main obstacles in the Buddhist context, we are given the hint that our discovery of our true self is blocked by three poisons, the three poisons of greed, ill will, and delusion or ignorance. So that is what we are invited to take a straight look at. What is greed in me? Where is that operating in me? As long as there is a sense in me that I am still lacking, and that I'm still needing this or that, and that I'm still incomplete, then the little insecure self is agitated and wants this or wants that, or wants to grab this or wants to grab that. And so that drives it into all sorts of frenzy in wanting to assume or uh, acquire or grasp things that are that it thinks are not yet its own. And so we can look at the operations of greed in those little things that make us feel that we're not complete, that we're uh, still needing this or that. If I don't have this, then I'm not, I'm not fully happy as yet, and so on. And as we pursue those things, then we are taken off the path and we are sidetracked. It is greed that also precipitates the second poison, namely, as I see that there are others out there who are also pursuing the same things that I'm in pursuit of. I harbor ill will against them, thinking that they are my rivals or they are my enemies, or they are people who will take what I want away from me. And so that leads to a kind of animosity between myself and others. And all of these, actions that really cause our lack of peace, that cause our dislocation, that cause our dukkha, that cause our state of being dissatisfied with ourselves, is based on a grand illusion or delusion or ignorance of what we truly are, what I truly am. And what that is, is the fact that we are all intimately interconnected with one another and with everything else. And not realizing that we act as if I were the only being in the universe that's worth 
considering and that I am the center of the universe and I look at the others as things or objects before me. And so there is that separation that causes that insecurity and that lack and that insufficiency, which causes therefore the ill will and the greed. So it's that fundamental ignorance of who we are, namely from the point of view of the enlightened one who taught, tells us that to see ourselves as we are is to see ourselves as intimately interconnected with each and everything in this infinite universe. And to see that intimate interconnectedness is what will set us free from all of those things that drive us away from the center because as we see how we are interconnected in that there is nothing that is not related to me. I realize that there is nothing that is lacking. There is nothing that is other than myself because my true self embraces all and that I am embraced with all. So the overcoming of the three poisons is what the practice entails. But it calls for first a really straight look at these three poisons. Is that what Dante had to do? He had to look at the different levels of hell and realize how it was causing the suffering of people. And he himself was so moved in witnessing the kinds of suffering of the denizens of hell. And so it is our own suffering to see how we are so motivated by greed, ill will, and ignorance. And if you look at not just individual lives, but this whole interconnected global system that we live in, systems, economic systems motivated by corporate greed, policies, political and um, social policies and so on motivated by ill will with this us versus them mentality thinking for our own benefit, we need to do this and we need to be in a different stance from this or that. And so it's this us and them tribalistic mentality that really causes a lot of the conflict in the world. And those animosities lead to violence and that's the kind of violence that we are now experiencing. So we are all caught in this mesh of greed and ill will based on the ignorance of not knowing how interconnected we are and not knowing how we are interdependent and not knowing and not realizing that we need one another and that we are already dependent on one another for our own destiny to attain true peace and true community and true family. We need to open our hearts and be able to embrace one another because that is what we are. So that is the overcoming of that delusion, realizing that interconnectedness. So now what does Zen practice offer in getting us there to overcome the three poisons? As I mentioned yesterday, the two ways that Zen invites us are first, simply this way of just sitting, just being still and paying attention to what is. Breathing in and breathing out with attention. Somehow we come to a place where all is calm and all is still. And as we see through those things that are taking us away from that stillness, then we are able to see through them and set them aside or let them go and continue the process of arriving at that place of peace. And arriving at that place of peace brings us an inner joy and contentment. Tasting that inner joy and contentment much more than the little pleasures we get in possessing this or that little thing or attaining this or that something in our um, in our day-to-day -day lives. They may bring us a little elation, a little joy sometimes, but that does not compare with the deep inner joy that comes to us as we come home to our true selves 
in that stillness that we can get a glimpse of in our sitting right here, right now, in experiencing just being. As we experience just being, we see that to be is beyond limits, beyond space and time. It is in that stillness when we experience that taste of to be. Philosophers would call that the ground of being. And as we know, the theologian Paul Tillich tries to articulate the significance of the word God in the Christian and the theistic traditions as the ground of being. And that is the place where we are invited to settle and find as our home in that ground of being. Now that happens as the, diff, the rift, the separation between the subject consciousness and the object that I think is out there separate from me somehow closes in and as I enter into that stillness in this practice of just sitting, breathing in and breathing out and allowing the mind to just continue homing into that place of peace. Somehow there is no longer any, I am feeling this or I am hearing that, but it is simply just this. This place of just this in that stillness fills our heart with peace and joy. Some of you, most of you, if not all of you have already had a taste of that, I believe. So please continue in your practice and let that inner peace and joy fill your heart. Now, the second approach that I had mentioned in Zen was through koans. And again, to abbreviate all of the many ramifications, the entry point koan that is most often offered is a koan mu. And again, abbreviating the background of that koan to simply describe what it entails. The practitioner breathes in and with every out breath accompanies that out breath with and empties out one's thoughts, one's desires, one's aspirations and simply follows and enters into that darkness, into that dark place where everything is simply emptied out. And as one continues in that process, one arrives at a place where it's all dark and there is nothing there, not even the self seeking something to find, not even something to find, but simply mm, permeating throughout the entire infinite universe. And as one arrives at that place where everything is just in that dark place called Mu, in one single instant, that dark place turns into a luminous light that enables each and everything to be seen just for what it is. And it is that luminous light that is, this, uh, is most descriptive of our true self. We ask ourselves, who am I? How can I live my life to the full as we enter into a spiritual path? And the end path or the end of that discovery or the end of that path is the realization and the emanation of that pure light that is right there from the start. So in Dante's case, well, after having gone through the depths of that darkness that is called Inferno, and they are finally brought out to the place where they can see the stars. And then they go through the stage of purification in Purgatorio. And then they arrive at Paradiso in its different stages. And at the ultimate part of our, at the ultimate um, place of their journey comes that place of light, the Empyrean, that all permeating light that shines on everything 
and which emanates throughout the whole universe. And it is simply basking in that light that our true self is most fully manifesting itself. And that is the invitation that each and every one of us is being offered to go through this journey through the inferno and through the purification of the purgatorio and then open our hearts to bask in that pure light. And then we are able to see each and everything in this concrete world basking in that pure light. And that pure light is also love. Again, I won't go into the details of the symbolism that Dante offers, but in our Zen tradition, as well as in other Buddhist traditions, that light is what is at the ultimate of all. And that's why Buddhist realization is called enlightenment, when that light opens up and shines on us all. And what can we do to allow that light to shine on us all? Nothing but just be. But we are called, therefore, to prevent those little movements in us that drive us into different directions based on greed and ill will and ignorance from taking over. And so that's why sitting still and just doing nothing but just being is the most direct way of letting that light come into our lives. And so through those two, two approaches, either through just sitting or through the koan, or through some other entry koan, which I will not go into now, where the mind is simply allowed to focus on that entryway. And as one enters into that place of total darkness, which then opens up to total light, then our whole life is transformed. Now basking in that light, basking in that love, the only thing left to do is to continue in this life of ours, sharing that life and sharing that love with others in very concrete ways, in the very concrete encounters we have with persons and with the rest of the world. So we can become an instrument of light, an instrument of love, an instrument of healing of this broken and very confused world. So that is what our Zen practice can allow us to be. Someone who is now able to bask in that light and who can become a beacon of that light to others, not of myself, so that there is nothing to be proud about, but to simply acknowledge that I am nothing but that light shining through me. So let us let that light shine through in each and every act of standing up, sitting down, taking our meals and so on. So this is what our session is meant to allow us to experience the intensity of that light. So do nothing but just be and just follow the procedures that we do in our session. And so in the context of that, we are allowing ourselves to bask in that light and allowing that light to really shine through us. And so as we continue the rest of our lives, that is all that is needed to allow that light to continue to emanate through us and let it shine to the rest of the world. I have spoken in grandiose terms, but it is really a day-to-day -day way of returning to that point and allowing that light to just shine and allowing that little self of ours that wants this or wants that to be set aside or rather to be consumed by that light so that there is no longer any little self that tries to control things, but let everything be simply an instrument of that light. And even in Dante's case, as he beheld that brilliant light, that dazzling light that is also dazzling love, he said, my whole life is now nothing but just letting that love guide me and letting that love empower me to whatever I need to do based on that light and that love. And that is what the way of Zen also invites us to, a way of living the light, living the love, and sharing it with everyone. Let us continue 
to go deep in our practice to enable that light to come through. Boundless compassion, as for me, for sounds of awakening, of the Buddha, right here, this Buddha, the source of compassion, this Buddha receives only compassion, Buddha, karma, sangha, just compassion, bless the pure heart, always be. Oh, 